The answer to the question of what is the best Nintendo system is one that is incredibly debatable. With just how many systems the company has produced and how many of them have their own unique game library and overall experiences, there really isn't a wrong answer to what is the best Nintendo system. But screw that, there'll always be a right answer in my heart, and that is the 3DS. You know, in some ways, I always felt like the 3DS was an incredibly underrated system. Yeah, that's right, the system that sold 76 million units and was generally regarded as a decent success, I called it underrated. The reason why is because while yes, the 3DS was considered successful and sold decently well, it still ended up being the lowest selling gaming handheld device Nintendo has ever sold. And when people bring up this era of Nintendo when the 3DS was supported, more people online seem to be putting their praises and attention on Nintendo's other system during that generation, the Wii U. Which is fair, the Wii U sold incredibly poorly and most people during that time just completely ragged on the system for its shortcomings so I can see why people are now going back and saying that it wasn't so bad or it was one of Nintendo's best systems and whatnot, but like... I don't know man, this thing was so much better than that. For starters as to why, the design of the system was pretty much the exact same as its predecessor, the DS. I briefly mentioned before in a previous video about how I believe that the DS was the best design Nintendo has ever made for a handheld system, ever. I always liked the dual screen design of the system, especially when some games displayed information and HUD elements of the game on the bottom screen so that the top of the screen where the gameplay is happening remains uncluttered. I liked how the clamshell design of the system helped protect the screens and also make the footprint of the system really small, which means it's very quick and easy to whip out the device to play and also for when you need to put it away. In a time where it seems like portable devices in general are getting bigger and bigger than ever before, I've come to appreciate portable devices from only a mere decade ago that were smaller and thus more portable. Now since I like the design of the DS, it is pretty much self-explanatory why I would also like the design of the 3DS because, you know, it's the exact same. All of the praise I just gave to the DS's design also goes to the 3DS as well. But enough of what it is on the outside, what about the inside of the 3DS? By that I mean the system's graphical power. When I was a kid, I always wanted to have a portable Nintendo home console, a portable system that could play Nintendo games that are very similar, if not the same, as their modern home console iterations. The DS nearly made it there with how it was able to put out portable versions of games like Mario Kart and have it be very similar to the home console Mario Kart at the time in terms of enjoyment, but the DS just felt a little bit short in terms of being that portable Nintendo home console I always wanted. It was powerful enough to feature games with 3D models and environments, but it still wasn't powerful enough for any game to be incredibly ambitious or big with those 3D models and environments. Every single 3D model I've seen in a DS game looked like they would rival LEGO with how painful it would feel to step on them. The DS can play 3D games, but it was clear that it was still limited with its graphical power. Oh yeah, and also no form of analog joystick input, that also held it back. But then enter the 3DS. The 3DS was pretty much powerful enough to handle many types of 3D games, with pretty much a grand majority of the first party library having 3D models and environments. And it was absolutely a step up compared to the original DS in graphical power. So much so that its game library was pretty much now on par with Nintendo's recent home console games in both gameplay and visuals. Think about it, most of the games that were on Wii U had very similar versions on the 3DS, or sometimes it'll just be the Wii U game on 3DS. And we also now have some kind of analog joystick input with the circle pad, yippee! I also like how the 3DS in general was pretty much powerful enough to handle every game Nintendo put out on it. There there have been times where Nintendo had to make compromises for certain games due to technical limitations of certain systems they were released on. Games like Xenoblade Chronicles on Wii, Donkey Kong Country on Game Boy Color, and any game Nintendo releases now on the Switch comes to my mind when this happens. These are the types of games that when I play them or watch footage of them, I go, wow, this game is incredible. If only the hardware these games were released on were more powerful though, that would have been great. I never really got that feeling on 3DS. Pretty much a grand majority of first party titles looked and ran great on the base 3DS system alone and felt right at home on the system. The only times that this wasn't the case was for the very few games that were exclusive to the new 3DS system, and also Super Nintendo games for whatever reason. Oh yeah, I guess I should now bring up how absolutely killer its game library was. Super Mario 3D Land was a very simple but still a very fun pick up and play game. It's the type of game that where if I can't choose which game to play on the system, I would be content playing a few levels of 3D Land. Same thing goes for New Super Mario Bros. 2, again just a very good choice for a quick pick up and play game. Mario Kart 7 was an already entry in the Mario Kart series, I did like the underwater and gliding mechanics, though I personally enjoyed the last handheld Mario Kart game a lot more, but still, MK7 is alright. I honestly thought that the Mario and Luigi games we got on 3DS were pretty fun. Yes, I even liked the one that a lot of people didn't like so much. Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon was pretty fun. The Mario Golf game on 3DS is the best one in the series by far. My favorite game in the Yoshi series got a 3DS port. Smash for 3DS, Kirby playing a Robobot, Tomodachi Life, A Link Between Worlds, N64 Zelda Remasters, Barely the Fall, Where Gold, Samus Returns, Fire Emblem Games, Ultimate NES Remix, Rhythm Heaven, Mega Mix, DKC Return 3D. <gasps>
<laughs> there are so many good games, man. Oh yeah, and there's also this other 3DS game that features an angel, and it may or may not be one of my favorite games of all time in the history of gaming ever, and I may or may not have dedicated a good portion of my YouTube content revolving around it. You know, that's there too. I'm also not even mentioning the ones that were digital exclusives on the eShop. There were some really good games on there too. Oh, and let's not forget, it was also backwards compatible with DS games, which just means you have more amazing games to play on it. I am aware that not every swing on the 3DS was a guaranteed smash hit, but the good games massively outshine the bad ones. Besides, the worst games Nintendo put out on the 3DS weren't even that bad, just incredibly mediocre at the very worst, I believe. Definitely nothing that would make me want to throw a 3DS game right into my toilet bowl over how bad it is. Finally, I want to bring up that I know some of you are going to be wondering why the Switch isn't my favorite system, since it pretty much also checks the boxes of why I like the 3DS. It is also a portable Nintendo home console, it also has a great lineup of games, so why isn't that my favorite? Well, I guess it just has to do with how, in general, my time with the 3DS has always been one of constant content. I loved it when I first got my 2DS all those years ago, and I still love it just as much now, if not a lot more, than I ever did before. As much as I like the Switch, there's no denying that it has its flaws, some of which I personally find pretty major, and ones that have hindered my experience and enjoyment of the system. And because of that, it made me appreciate the 3DS a lot more in retrospect. With the 3DS, the games never really had visual or performance problems, I never had to pay for online, there were a lot of customization options via themes, the buttons and controls of the system felt great, and more importantly, didn't go out of whack even after the lightest of use. I got to choose which legacy Nintendo games I wanted to get via virtual console, it was filled with so much charm and charisma with its user interface such as every menu having its own unique piece of music, street pass. You guys seriously should have had Street Pass on the Switch, it would have been cool. In brief, that is why I love the 3DS and why it's my favorite Nintendo system. It just manages to elevate itself right onto the top of the podium by having everything I could ever want from a Nintendo system. It may have had its few shortcomings, and I also thought that the entire gimmick of the stereoscopic 3D feature didn't really enhance anything. I could only ever recall like two games ever wowing me with the 3D, but still the pros of the system alone pretty much elevated to being the greatest. Also the modding scene is crazy, look I can have a Mogus as my theme. I just got these new steel-toed boots. I don't really know how much I'm gonna wear them, but I might just wear them so I don't stub my toe. But I also, I also. <laughs> <laughs> 